Oh, I want to know what will be the next possible big name in the market. Give me some names, stock names that I can pick from. Everybody that has a ChatGPT account can try that. It's not giving you any other information um, that you don't know, but it's making this information available in a very fast way. So how can AI tools help us? You know, for example, me as a retail investor, I want to know how AI can help me make better informed investment decisions, right? Should I buy this? Should I sell that? You know, although I see myself as a long-term investor, but I still wanted to, to know how AI can help me to make better decisions, you know, portfolio analysis and so on. So do you have any tools or any essential AI tools and technologies that you think for beginner investors, you know, for us that we should be aware of? I think there are uh, uh, multiple tools that are now uh, uh, rising in the market, as you can imagine. Uh, but uh, uh, I would like to show you um, something very basic um, that is available to everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody that has a, a ChatGPT account can try that. And it's, uh, okay. it's nice because you can uh, create your own GPT, meaning your own okay. tool. Um, to um, facilitate your investment decisions. Um, yeah. So we can maybe, if you allow me, I can show you something and uh, yeah, we can yeah, maybe, yeah, exactly. Look at it yeah, together. I think you can also share your screen. So maybe you can first explain the use cases and what you want to achieve mm -hmm. by, you know, by doing this. Uh, how about you tell me what would you like to achieve as a, um, a retail investor and we try and uh, build a tool that is able to support you in your uh, decisions. Okay. Okay. I didn't expect this, but okay, let me think. So currently, um, my portfolio is pretty much in passive investments and I have a core um, portfolio, like may maybe in global equities. But in the meantime, I wanted to, you know, take some more risks. I want you to know, I want you to know what will be the next possible big name in the market that um, give me some names, stock names that I can pick from that will be likely. I'm not saying oh, for sure it will, you know, double or triple the amount in five mm -hmm. years, but I at least, you know, promising, give me some promising names. So uh, maybe uh, let me clarify that um, okay. there is no magic that can uh, forecast. Can, prom the, can the promise, the yeah. <laughs> no one has a crystal ball, including yeah. ChatGPT. <laughs> and uh, I think finance has demonstrated in the history that uh, it's not um, um, an exact science. So mm -hmm. uh, what can AI do is make the analysis of the historical data faster, but it can't be more accurate uh, than... Uh, uh, we have been in the history yeah. in mm -hmm. in uh, predicting the uh, the trends, but uh, let's try to see um, uh, if your use case can be um, in any in any way supported by AI. Okay, can you see my cool. screen? Yes, yes, perfect. So uh, you might be familiar with this. This is uh, ChatGPT. I'm sure you have uh, played around with it. Yeah. Um, you bought the uh, premium, right? So we ha you have ChatGPT for all that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, the access to uh, the premium uh, version actually um, enable you to see um, this uh, nice tool that I'm about to show, mm -hmm. um, which is basically the possibility to create your own GPT uh, for your use case. And this is what we're going to do now, right now. So we can go here to explore GPT and we can actually create a new GPT. And uh, basically what we have here is um, ChatGPT telling us uh, that uh, he'll help us build a new GPT and we just have to tell him what would we like to make. So um, allow me to repeat what was uh, your use case to uh, understand if I got it correctly. Mm -hmm. So you asked me, um, so you said you are a, a retail investor, basically, and uh, you are trying to add to your portfolio uh, some new stocks and you're trying to screen the market to see if there is some promising stocks. And basically mm -hmm. you want JGPT 
uh, to give you an instrument to uh, help you make informed decisions based on data that are um, collected faster. Yeah, so, exactly. So I'm going to tell JGPT that I am Charlene, a retail investor that is interested in buying new stocks. And let's say that I would like to collect uh, the latest market trends, stock market data with uh, uh, a daily summary uh, of the most interesting stocks, including technical data, like what? What do you want to have? I don't know, moving average, um, volume trends, what do you like? Anything in particular that you would like to see? Um, like with some high potentials in earnings, like in EBITDA, for example. Okay. Is, can, can I say something like this? What is this with high potential in EBITDA? Um, and I will ask you him to show the results in table whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's start from this. Let's see. So now he's building a tool that is able to, to do this. Now he asked me, uh, let's choose a name for this GPT. How about stock market advisor? I would yeah. say Charlene, stock market advisor. <laughs> okay, but uh, I'm not the advisor, ChatGPT currently the advisor. <laughs> Just, I need to put a disclaimer as well. We're <laughs> not recommending anyone to buy anything, any, I mean, single stocks. Great. Okay, so he's claiming that a profit picture is created. But I can see it. Sorry. And I will tell him that I can see it. Okay, so do you like this profile picture? <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay, so this is the new icon of your tool. And now he is asking us, uh, what should be emphasized or avoided in the responses of Charlene Stock Market Advisor? So I would say technical information, including trends and uh, maybe 52 weeks range and maybe moving average information should be con concise i would like to have three stocks recommended yep. every day every day <laughs> yeah so every day. every day they will send me three names for me to choose from yeah Let's see. Okay, should the tone be formal, friendly, or something else, Charlene? I would say technical, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Let's see how technical it can be. <laughs> Okay, let's try. So we have a preview of our tool here. And uh, there ah, are so some on the right hand questions. side is the tool yes. that it creates for you. Okay. Yeah. So for example, he um, based on the question that we asked, he um, has now generated this uh, standard questions. Mm -hmm. So if you save the tool as is, you will have every day, every time that you open it, you will have these standard questions. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's see what are today's top performing stocks. Let's see what it says. Okay. So this is updated to today, as you see, because that's... Um... Oh, that's they already got yeah. the, the latest data. Exactly. And it's showing uh, some... Um, 
stocks, micron technology with performances, year to date, sector technology details. Um, so it says what does the company why, do, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, and why it's interesting. Um, and then let's see what else does it say. Um, yeah. There are also the sources here. So, of course, you can uh, um, uh, deep dive that into the source. Insider. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try something else. Let's see, for example, um, which stocks should I consider buying? Okay, let's see. What, what does it say? Probably the same tree. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh. see, now it's generating oh. a table, actually. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Oh, NVIDIA. Okay. Thanks, GPT. We didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but see there are i mean you can select the technical data that you want so yeah, the message yeah. that i wanted to share here is just gpt here is not telling you exactly what to buy it's not giving you any other information um that you don't know but it's making this information available in a very fast way fast manner yeah 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 for very example we talk about um current price we talk about EBITDA we talk about moving average yeah all of these um data yeah. you can get just and, like in second and this is the these are the parameters that are important for us but another investor could select something else and the thing is um the tool is able to build this table that you would mm. build yourself by um, a very thorough analysis on on many websites but mm. here you're just just with a um, prompt you are receiving this information and consider that if we save this now we mm. can create this. Let's say that we create this tool. You have it available. Um, and uh, basically, this is a tool that you have here available. Ah, on the your left tools. Hand side that you can yes. use a reuse. And every a, day, a mm. yes, every day you can ask him to show the same data and uh, probably they will change. Uh, I think that's just really powerful. Yeah, you can yeah. save the problem. You don't need to repeat every single day. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I love this. Okay, Gabriel, I think the next question I wanted to ask you is because you already did a disclaimer that, okay, it's mainly for data, um, sourcing, mm -hmm. and, you know, chat GPTs or AI in general <laughs> is mainly for data sourcing and data analytics. And um, so my question for you is like how reliable it is. You know, you don't, I don't know if you wanted to, you want your friends or family to use chat GPT to get stock names and then buy, buy the stocks purely because chat, G, chat GPT recommend that to you, will you? Or yeah. In another so, words, like how reliable you think it is, <laughs> or what you show us, how reliable it is. Yeah, uh, honestly, I wouldn't trust uh, Judge GPT more than any other financial advisor. So, um, uh, uh, on one end, I wouldn't consider it uh, uh, more reliable than uh, someone who's performing the same analysis alone. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, the underlying reason for that is that I personally believe and. and I think everybody is aware that finance is not an exact science. So mm -hmm. even if we consider all the historical factors and we have the most powerful tool to analyze these historical factors, uh, then uh, the you know the, the results of this inference um, and uh, the uh, suggestion and recommendation for the future are not always uh, meeting the target that we expect. Mm -hmm. So this is an, an, an inherent uh, limitation of finance per se and uh, AI can accelerate the way you collect and analyze those information uh, but the accuracy in the prediction uh, will have some gaps exactly as the human prediction and this is due to effects that don't depend on AI like <laughs> market volatility you know the black swan effect uh, and this has happened multiple times in, in the history of finance. So mm. um, I wouldn't rely on AI. So AI will not solve the problem of uh, unpredictability of the market. Mm. What AI could do, <laughs> though, uh, yeah. which might be scaring, is spotting patterns that we can't understand. 
so AI could make recommendation or even in the most advanced usage of it, make automatically decisions based on patterns that it will be able to spot. And we are can, not can able to understand. Can you give me an example, for example, what kind of patterns that you're... You, uh, you I don't know, uh, patterns in the markets based on uh, uh, data that we're not used to collect, that we are not used even to imagine. Um, like, for example, uh, you know, find correlations between factors that we would never consider. It, no, it won't necessarily uh, guarantee that there is a better predictability of the market. It will just mm -hmm. maybe use different uh, parameters to make decisions, but uh, it won't make the market more predictable. Mm, yeah, I think I'm more or less, I understand what, what you wanted to say is that there are some, you know, for example, risk factors or parameters that as human being, as investor, you may not track it on a daily mm -hmm. basis. But for AI, once they see a certain you know, factor or risk factor or parameters suddenly got so high or so low and then it can immediately track it and then it can give you a hint and it probably, probably a big risks ahead yeah. that you you don't you, you didn't realize. <laughs> so I think the key is to keep human supervisions mm -hmm. uh, that will still uh, most likely uh, lead to a uh, an unpredictable uh, market and and make inaccurate decisions, but at mm -hmm. least it can be human inaccurate decisions. So that's uh, yeah, that's yeah. I good. love this. You know, we can use AI for data sourcing analytics, but at the end of the day, we still need human judgment in the overall investment strategy. Yeah. Yeah, I think one last question before we move on to the next topic is like, do, do you know some real world success stories where AI, you know, has significantly improved investment outcomes? I know we just, you know, did a demo, but I just want you to check, you know, any real life stories that you heard or just like happened to you or your family, friends or colleagues. <laughs> No, one interesting story that I read, uh, mm -hmm. um, it was uh, about, it was uh, basically about um, um, a platform for um, investment decision based on AI. Uh, it's a platform called, I uh, think, QAI. It's uh, part of the Forbes ecosystem. And uh, I think there were some cases uh, where AI has behaved better than uh, the majority of uh, um, of the customers. But this is mainly driven to a factor, which is the emotional factor. So mm. AI um, is emotionless. Um, and uh, one interesting case uh, was this case in, in 2022, mm. uh, I think it was August, uh, Tesla announced um, uh, a new stock split. Um, it was a three to one split. And it was following previous um, uh, events on this asset, uh, previous split events. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in general, uh, stock split is perceived by the market as an indicator of health of the company because it means that uh, the company is expecting the value of the uh, share to it's like increase. Expanding, right? Mm. Yes. And then therefore, an announcement of the stock split uh, in general, is perceived as a good indicator of, of health. In reality, AI suggested not to buy Tesla in that case uh, cool. because there were no, um, let's say, no uh, hard data supporting that there was a growth uh, in the value and it was not foreseen the stock price to increase from the technical data. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that case, the stock split was more some sort of cosmetics, probably to attract the investor. And uh, indeed, many investors bought Tesla in that, uh, in that case. And in that month, they experienced a 30% loss in, uh, wow. uh, in uh, <laughs> Tesla price. So, and the, the interesting fact is that this happened uh, two more times the same year. Uh, mm -hmm. with the, uh, one was with Google and one was with GameStop. And again, mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, stock splits. So uh, the market was encouraged to buy, but the AI was not, let's say, fooled by this. Uh, yeah, um, AI uh, didn't buy, <laughs> yeah, by the AI story. Didn't, uh, exactly. didn't buy the story. And, and it uh, proves that AI is correct. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there are, I mean, uh, I still uh, believe that uh, AI will not be better than uh, humans Human at predicting being. finance. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, the capability to analyze data will become a lot faster and mm -hmm. we will have access to a, a, a larger amount of data and will make decisions faster. So I expect um, a change in, uh, uh, in general, change in people's portfolio because AI will make this decision available very fast. Um, yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. the structure of, of the investment will change in the future, but I don't expect AI to perform better. Uh, on the yeah, long, yeah, on the long I totally um, agree with you. At the end of the day, you it's still human being who make decisions and AI. There are probably if you see ten factors that in front of you that uh, you will based on the ten factors to decide on if you want to buy a stock or or sell a stock, for example. And AI can quickly give you the ten you know, uh, give you data regarding the 10 factors probably. And then you immediately get the data that you need and you make decision instead of AI make decision on behalf of you. So sometimes they may give you some hints or some indicators or some, par you know, parameters that you even didn't think about, but AI provide to you. But at the end of the day, you are the decision maker. So, okay, Gabriele, I think we talk a lot about um, how... The world, how amazing the world is with AI, how amazing the finance industry is with the help um, of AI. So now I want you to focus um, on something on something else. We haven't talked about the risks, right? So AI, on the other hand, yeah, on one hand, it can bring you convenience, can bring you a lot of comfort. But on the other hand, there are a lot of risks involved. You know, people talk about privacy concerns, people talk about ethical considerations. So what are the, for example, when it comes to data privacy concerns, what are the data privacy concerns related to AI in finance specifically? And hmm. for example, as an investor or beginner investor, how can you ensure your data, my data is protected? Hmm. So um, I think this is... Uh probably the hottest topic on uh, uh, the regulator's agenda these days. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, also here, I think we need to make a distinction between AI in general and uh, what we have seen, for example, before uh, large language model as ChatGPT. If we think about the example... Large language model as ChatGPT. Okay, let, let, let's skip that question. <laughs> <It gets the laughs> <Okay. thing. laughs> No, but what I what I what I mean a, a large language model in, in a nutshell is mm -hmm. um, a system um, that is pre-trained on a large amount of data to respond mm -hmm. to whatever input you give it. So in the example mm -hmm. that we showed before, we um... didn't have to uh, uh, to have a specialized set of data in finance. We just mm -hmm. asked ChatGPT because ChatGPT is pre-trained on every aspect it, it mm. has a superficial knowledge and it can go vertically on a specific as, uh, aspect if you ask the right questions but mm. in general it's pre-trained on a general knowledge and of course models like gpt uh, as for the example you've shown before are very easy to use so mm -hmm. it's a, a plug and play technology that you could apply to your portfolio yeah, and yeah. The potentially you know uh application could be built on and integrated with that but when you want to leverage on this on such a broad knowledge you need to accept the fact that your data are going uh into a public cloud uh with a huge computational power which is the only infrastructure that can afford to have such a broad knowledge at the cheap price. Mm. On the other end, an alternative is uh, for some company with data restriction to build their own models. So smaller models with, uh, let's say, uh, more dedicated knowledge, which you need to make the effort to train. So you need to feed this model with data of your mm -hmm. Uh, personal portfolio, for example, and then he will be able to make uh, inference on 
only the data that you have provided. So, okay. So, yeah, back to, short, <laughs> back to the question. Back to the question. When you, uh, when we talk about um, large language model available like ChatGPT, you get a lot of knowledge, but your data goes uh, into a public cloud, and you don't mm -hmm. really know the level of protection um, that you have with respect guaranteed with respect to that data. So, if it was your personal uh, portfolio investment, uh, so for example, now we have asked ChatGPT only to tell us what to buy, but imagine mm -hmm. that you would input your portfolio there. Um, would you be comfortable in doing that, knowing that you don't know where this data go? So, um, mm, I think... yeah, for example, like I have 20K here, 10K there. I bought some, I bought Apple share on um, last year in May. How much, yeah. like this kind of information you are talking about, right? Exactly. So, uh, mm. let's say private information, uh, or confidential information are still, uh, you know, it's difficult to understand if this model will uh, allow us to treat those data in a safe way. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also there are, of course, data protection regulations, especially in Europe, that prevent this data from being used uh, by um, such uh, models. So uh, initially I thought that this technological advancement is so big that data protection laws will need mm -hmm. to align and to become, uh, uh, let's say, a little bit more, uh, maybe lose to allow uh, this technological advancement to happen because mm -hmm. you can't stop it. But yeah. uh, uh, one month ago, uh, the first uh, um, European Union AI Act was published. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the first word uh, uh, binding regulation on the usage of data. Mm -hmm. And what we can see from this new regulation is that no, they will not make the um, restriction uh, looser on, on uh, usage of data. So the mm -hmm. protection of data, at least in Europe, will still be more important than the technological advancement. Uh, so there are, and there are being introduced a lot of restrictions more to uh, impose that uh, every um, tool that use AI should clearly disclose that is using AI. And if there mm -hmm. is a, a risk connected with the, with the data, um, then some uh, actions will be prevented by law. So uh, data privacy remain as a concern, but especially for a European um, citizen, I think there is a complex uh, uh, regulatory framework that is coming uh, to prevent mm -hmm. the, um, uh, high risk from, from uh, materializing. Yeah. And is it fair to say that as investor or as an um, end user of these AI tools, we basically can do nothing but count on those, you know, count on the regulation to come out to protect us. And then in the meantime, we also need to be a little bit careful, be aware what kind of data that we provide to ChatGPT and other AI tools. Yeah, correct. I think, mm -hmm. I think you, you should use this uh, uh, this tool wisely. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's really important. Don't tell ChatGPT everything about you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Another risk, uh, you know, apart from, apart from privacy, um, I think another risk that a lot of people were talking about this on the ethical side of thing, right? And is it really ethical? Is there any ethical concerns? So again, as end user, as end investor, is there anything that we should be aware of when using AI in finance and investing overall? Um, so we're talking about um, um, precisely the ethical risks, you mean ethical yeah. concerns. Exactly. Yeah. So one risk that I see is uh, that uh, AI potentially might create uh, the opportunity for people to, um, let's say, use it in a way that become a little bit biased. Uh, I'll tell mm. you uh, concrete examples. So AI can interpret trends or misinterpret mm. trends sometimes, uh, but it can, in, in the moment it start giving you uh, financial advices, it can generate trends also, mm. right? But these trends uh, 
potentially could be biased on um, factors uh, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, race, sexual orientation, political opinion, uh, trade union membership. So uh, uh, AI is the potential to make inference on these kind of aspects that are normally not visible when you buy a stock but uh, potentially could build the models that are able to decide um, whether to make an investment or not based mm. on uh, this bias criteria, um, religious criteria, sexual orientation, you know, um, all of them. So there is a high risk that uh, this might, uh, uh, might end up in, in bias consideration. Uh, but again, I think to, uh, protect from those risks we need to rely on on a, um, a regulatory framework and uh, mm -hmm. i think what is clear is that uh, um, especially in europe uh, uh, the the regulation that's already existing on you know the very basic uh, universal human rights mm -hmm. will need to be enforced to make sure that ai is not yeah, um, it just out mean. of curiosity and in terms of um, regions, right? Do usually um, usually um, the AI regulation or overall this kind of regulation are stricter here in Europe versus you know in Asia or US? I'm just out of curiosity or look more loose here. In general, uh, all the data protection regulations are in general stricter in Europe. Uh, in Europe, okay. Mm. Yeah. That's but, how I perceive as well, yeah. yeah. But with respect to AI in particular, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, the European Union AI Act is the first global regulation on AI. There is yeah. no other regulation. So it's okay. uh, it's really stricter because... Uh, it's because more it's, advanced uh, than the yes. other regions. Yes. Mm -hmm. In other regions, they have uh, some like recommendations or, uh, you know, very specific... Uh, uh, guidelines, but not yet. Uh, uh, okay. clear it's very good to know. Yeah, the differences, you know, in this term. So before I let you go, Gabrielle, I, I have one more question. So do you have anything to add? Actually, we talk about in terms of risks, we talk about data privacy concerns, we talk about we already talk about ethical considerations, any other potential risks, you know, as an end investor as an end user that we should be aware of? Yeah, I think uh, the major risk when it comes to investment is to make uh, uneducated decisions. Um, and uh, this is something that uh, uh, can be tempting because you could rely on this uh, powerful instrument uh, and just uh, take it as the Bible and just buy what, is, what AI suggests. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the reality is that uh, AI models can be biased for uh for many reasons can the data quality cannot be optimal um so in my opinion ai should be treated as a complex financial instrument when it comes to investment uh mm -hmm. so um and in my opinion also from a regulatory point of view um uh, using an ai um uh, an ai uh, based portfolio should be something that uh, um, uh, that basically is uh, only allowed to people that have a certain knowledge, uh, mm. of finance knowledge. This is exactly what happens when you buy uh, assets. If you want to buy a structured product, you mm. need to make a questionnaire and demonstrate that you have a certain the knowledge. The experience, of the topic. education, yes. knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that AI uh, uh, based portfolio should still um, make sure that the investment that are suggested are still within the level of education of, of the person who is uh, at the end making the investment. So still educate yourself, you know, empower yourself with experience and knowledge. AI is only your tool, it's not your Bible. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you thank so you. much, Gabrielle. I think today, I seriously, I learned a lot from you. You know, especially AI and、uh, the overall technology as well, the risks, the opportunities, and the, you know AI's impact in the job market as well. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. I wanted to know, like, for those people who may be interested in you know getting in touch with you, so how can we get in contact with you? For example, are you?、Um, On social media, or where can we find you? I think the easiest way is to、um, contact me on LinkedIn. I'm, on LinkedIn, I'm quite active. Okay, with your、uh, full、there. name. Yes. Okay, so yes. we have your name here. For, I will also add the link. Yeah. For how much hard is it to spell?、Uh, I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> I need to. <laughs> yeah. At the very beginning, I was asking Gabrielle,、oh, how can I、um, pronounce your surname? <laughs> and I tried a few times, and then okay, I will just introduce you with your first name. <laughs> Exactly, it's always a, a yeah. A good Anyways,、choice. it's so 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 nice to have you here today, and、uh, I really hope our audience can you know learn a lot、um, from you as well, just same as I did. So we will see you next time. Thank you, Charlene. It was a pleasure to talk to you today.、Uh, it was a very interesting session, and uh, um, hope you enjoyed. And、uh, let me know if you pick one of the stocks of the. Um, Charlene,、uh, stock yeah, market, yeah.、Uh, I will keep you updated、analyst. and let you know how it performed. <laughs> okay, cheers. Thanks. Bye bye.